happy Wednesday. Today we're going to continue in Acts 26. We're actually going to finish out the chapter and we're talking about how Paul's in the middle of giving some pretty riveting testimony when a hearing with King Agrippa um, bringing you know his defense against his uh, accusers in Jerusalem and the relig religious leaders. So we're going to continue on with that this morning. So you can go ahead and grab your beverage of choice today and let's get ready to dive in and of course always put in your prayer request there in the comments the team is ready to pray for you as well as all of our other biblecast community members who are on here this morning and then if you are not yet a subscriber to the trinity fellowship facebook page or to the biblecast youtube channel go ahead and do that that way you can be notified of all the wonderful things that are happening at trinity fellowship with the biblecast or other weekend services and other events that we have going on another great content throughout the week. So we're so happy that you are here. Let's get ready to dive back into Paul's story in Acts 26. So we'll pick up in verse 19. If we remember, Paul just laid out um, his experience with Jesus, and then he shared the gospel. And then we could continue here, and he picks up with verse 19. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. So Paul is laying out his why here. After sharing his experience of God and how Jesus changed his life, he says then uh, that he had to share the truth. And so he starts sharing the truth with the Jews and then to the Gentiles. He also gives a clear call to action for anyone listening at this point that Whenever you have an experience of Jesus at that point, repent and turn to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those things are, you know, right back to back. Repent means to change your mind. Turn to God. You know, don't just stop there. Run to God. And then he talks about letting your actions um, be in keeping with your repentance. So then, you know, live it out. Let's live it out. So then continuing in verse 21, it says, For this reason... The Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had the help that comes from God. And so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. So something that's interesting here is that Paul says, I have had the help that comes from God. And so, but we, we also know that Paul has been in prison for um, quite literally a couple of years now. And so it's really interesting for him to say, I've had the help that comes from God. But what we can know is that Paul was more about telling people about Jesus than he was about his own personal freedom. And so he saw that opportunity of being imprisoned as really help from God to put him before all the people of great influence that he has, that he has been before. And then I love too that he says that he has said nothing other than the gospel, saying nothing other than what the prophets um, were, were said would come to pass. And so, you know, in this culture and day and age where we kind of are encouraged to live our own individual truth, Paul is like, no, there is one truth. I'm going to say the truth. I'm going to say nothing more than the truth. There is no other gospel. There is one gospel. There is one truth, and there is simple action that goes along with it to proclaim the name of Jesus and that truth to everyone that we encounter. Pretty cool. It is, and Paul's <laughs> still not defending himself. He's just laying out the truth of what Jesus has done in his life and the truth of what Jesus offers to everyone that's listening. So we continue in verse 24. And as he was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great <laughs> learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I'm not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking true and rational words. For the king knows above about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things have escaped his notice. For this has not been done in a corner. So Festus can't imagine... Uh, as Paul stands before him in chains, he cannot imagine uh, Paul is anything but crazy. Yeah. What he sees is a prisoner, but Paul's happy. He, had, he And he sees Paul insisting that God raises the dead, that, that an experience with a heavenly vision of Jesus has changed his life, and that Paul's more concerned about proclaiming Jesus and what Jesus offers to everyone than his personal freedom. And that, that Paul stands before Festus and believes in hope and redemption for all humanity, for Jews and Gentiles through Jesus. So Paul clarifies that not that he's not crazy. In fact, 
through truth and reason is actually a part of all the things that he believes and then he stands in that truth and that's what gives him his confidence so he's not he's not crazy and he doesn't move from that position mm -hmm. and then in verse 27 he says king agrippa do you believe the prophets i know that you believe and agrippa said to paul in a short time would you persuade me to be a christian another word right there is almost would you almost um, have me be a christian and Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. And so he, Paul here is appealing to King Agrippa, where Festus is from Rome. He probably really does have not much context outside of what he's just heard for Jesus, for the way and all that was going on. Um, with Jesus, but King Agrippa does. He has the expertise about the law um, and Jer Jerusalem. He's been around these things and he knows what the prophets have said. And so he's appealing to Agrippa, just like Daniel was saying, on that logic. And here Agrippa says to Paul, in a short time, would you almost make me a Christian? You know, he's, he's saying like, I'm, I'm almost there. Um, I'm almost there. And Paul's like, yes, I would want that for you. But here's the thing about Agrippa is that almost is not enough. And so here we have Agrippa saying, sitting up there next to Festus, a man of influence, next to um, Bernice, his sister, who is also, you know, an, an immoral person. And he's living this life of immorality and influence. And he sees Paul standing there in chains. And he's got a decision to make. And he decides almost, almost, but not quite. And so Agrippa's fear of you know whatever it may be losing influence um not wanting to give up that lifestyle keeps him from um enjoying the freedom that although paul is there in chains the freedom that he very much knows that paul has because he is following jesus verse 30 then the king rose and the governor and bernice and those who were sitting with them and when they had withdrawn they said to one another this man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment and Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So Paul's appeal to Rome actually keeps him in chains. And there's there's different commentators that argue whether uh, Paul should have appealed or not. And if he was um, trusting more in the Roman system or and not trusting in God. When, But what we see here is that Paul is utilizing his Roman citizenship to appeal and by doing so he's using every advantage he has in the the time and place that he lives in order to share the gospel with every person that he had might have the opportunity to including caesar so now what we're going to see and follow paul as he goes he's going to go to rome and he's going to have the opportunity to share about jesus with the highest ruling ruler of the land well and so you know the moral of the story <laughs> for these last several chapters and really for the book of acts continues to be let's be like paul so let's say the gospel proclaim the gospel proudly proclaim nothing but the gospel mm -hmm. the truth the one truth and put simple action behind it let's view our circumstances and places where you know we might feel quote unquote like like we're in chains as opportunities that God wants to use and how he wants to use and move through us to help proclaim the gospel and and as we do you know let's pray that as we're encountering people um, that they're almost would become a yes that those who um, need to hear the gospel and who God wants to use to um, share the good news even through sharing our testimony and what God has done in our own lives um, let's pray and believe that that helps take people from almost to a yes, I'm all in, as we are all in for um, for God and, and who he is and what he's done and what he is doing. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Um, thank you for, for who you are. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for the truth. We stand on the truth today. We thank you that you love to provide us opportunities to um, to speak and share what you have done and i pray that you would open our eyes to speak and share boldly as paul has done um in in the story today i pray that you would help us to share boldly i pray that you would open our eyes to see these opportunities i pray that you would give us wisdom um, as we share our stories and as we you know proclaim boldly i just ask for confidence over all of us today as we go forth into our um 
work day and to our homes with our families, wherever it is that you have called us to put our hands to, God, we go and we say we're with you and we're for you. Um, and we ask that you would use us as vessels to bring people um, for the freedom that we have and get to experience in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, all right. Y'all have an awesome Wednesday. We'll be back here tomorrow for Thursday Pray Day. In the meantime, we love you. We'll see you soon.